thee we call, O Lord, our God. in this holy sacrifice and now please make an examination of your conscience for your penance for the next three nights Besides offering your evening prayer, I ask that you read one of the three readings as prescribed on this, the 16th Sunday in the Ordinary, and pray that the Holy Spirit may enlighten you, that you may have a greater understanding of what is contained within the Word of God. And now let us recite together the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you from all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Two things I ask of you, deny them not to me before I die. The falsehood in life, far from me, give me neither poverty nor riches, provide me only with the glory of the Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be for all that I have Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glow, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the 
shepherd my people. You have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them, but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so that they need no longer fear and tremble and none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's gradual. Yet in bestowing his goodness, he did not leave himself without witness. For he gave you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, and filled you with nourishment and gladness for your hearts. The hungry he has filled with good things, the rich he has sent away empty. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, he who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two thus establishing peace, and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. They ate till they had more than enough, for he had given them 
what they craved. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may proclaim his holy gospel. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in a boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. receive blessings from the Lord and justice will come from his saving God these words are taken from the book of Psalms Psalm 24 verses 3 and 5 in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen to you my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus as many of you know I love reading and I believe I got that from both my mother and father who were avid readers one of my earliest interests was in climbing mountains when I was much younger around age eight I remember going to the children's library in Chicopee and found a book about the successful summiting and the disaster that followed on the Matterhorn in Switzerland in 1865. And yet, 
I wanted to climb the summit of this mountain. As I look back, if I was younger, which I am presently not, I would have loved to have been a high-altitude climber and to reach the summits of various mountains. I marveled at all those who first climbed the highest peaks, over 8,000 meters or over 26,000 feet, which in mountaineering is simply known as the death zone where the air pressure is about one-third of normal, breathable oxygen. It has been described as climbing a very high ladder with a plastic bag over your head. It should be noted that only a handful of individuals have ascended all 14 8,000 meter peaks without supplemental oxygen. So from the conquest of Mount Everest in 1954, to K2, to Annapurna, man has met the limitations of themselves. It was Sir John Hunt, the expedition leader in 1954 Everest expedition, that was quoted as saying, there is no height nor depth that the spirit of man, guided by a higher spirit, cannot attain. In 1954, a beekeeper by the name of Edmund Hillary and a Nepalese Sherpa guide named Tenzing Norgay were the first to stand at the roof of the world. I recently saw a segment on 60 Minutes of a double amputee veteran who had lost both legs through an IUD in Iraq and who came forth and brought many families, both men and children, who lost their husbands and fathers in the ongoing conflict and war in Vietnam and Ukraine to face their fears and their own limitations. His concept of teaching others to ascend and conquer a mountain has provided for all of them, as they testified, the strength to face whatever obstacle or limitation that they are presently enduring, as well as to provide for all of them, both young and old, the strength to overcome any future obstacle or limitation. <clears throat> as I have said in the past, I have read that when a person climbs a mountain, they find God. And when, when one travels to the wilderness, they find themselves. We read that Moses found God when he ascended Mount Sinai, as we read in the book of Exodus. The great prophet Elijah also climbed a mountain and found God. And we also remember in the gospel the transfiguration of Jesus who brought Peter, James, and John to a mountaintop. My dear brothers and sisters, I believe that we are all on a journey to know not only God, but also to better know ourselves. So I say to you that whenever we are faced with any limitation or fear, 
and decide through the strength and guidance of our Lord to step out of our comfort zone and push ourselves to over overcome our own obstacles and fears. I believe that the Lord is present. He prods us to go higher, to a greater height of understanding of his divine presence in our lives. So who may go up the mountain of the Lord? Who can stand in his holy place? The clean of hand and the pure of heart, who has not given his soul to useless things what is vain. He will receive blessings from the Lord, and justice will come from his saving God. May we, my dear brothers and sisters, gather to give praise and honor unto the Lord, come to trust in him. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Nick Benjamin Pafaloni Jesus Christus.
and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, may we who offer this oblation be filled with the love of Jesus and go forth as instruments of your purpose. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, look upon all of us gathered here this day and favor the gifts which we offer to you on behalf of the souls of our late departed brother and sister for John and Florence McLeakey. Grant that they may be united with you in eternal happiness. All of this we ask through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through his teachings and ministry, Jesus showed us how we are to live giving our lives in service to you and to all people. Still hearing the word in our world today, may we all strive to follow his example of righteousness and set our hearts on the world yet to come. And so therefore on this day we join with the voices of angels and archangels, along with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and unspotted sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord, May we pray, my dear brothers and sisters, for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, for the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. May we pray this day for world peace. May we offer prayer for all abused and neglected children, all abused and neglected animals, and all victims of both violence both here and abroad and father may we also pray for all present here our families and loved ones who are known to you for whom we offer this day or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own for the hope of salvation and deliverance and who freely choose to serve you the living eternal and true God we join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who live, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family and so order our days in your peace that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty of, from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just separate table, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered to a holy sacrifice of Magdalene host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought from the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty. That we, who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar, may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. We pray this day. Amen. Lord, remember your servants, especially this day, for John and Florence McLeakey, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To their souls, O Lord, and all the rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light and peace, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, to part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and went lives pattern after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, Bless and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Instructed by our Savior's teaching, uh, and following the mind, example, 
we say with confidence, partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not because for our judgment or condemnation, though we are, un are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in all, all of us. Living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing through this communion. Make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will, May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return to the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. For those of you who will not be receiving 
the Blessed Eucharist sacramentally, let us now offer an act of spiritual communion. Let us pray, most loving Jesus. I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask that you come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord. Receive the body and the blood of Christ.
who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, inspire us with your love and pity to bring to you every straying and famished soul. Be their shepherd, satisfy them with the living bread, and grant us the witness of your Spirit in our hearts. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Accept, O Holy Lord, our fervent prayers for the soul of our faithful brother and sister, for John and Florence Medlitsky, and grant that through this holy sacrifice their souls may be cleansed from human transgressions and attain everlasting life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and art one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity and grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you, through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God, the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us and we have seen his glory the glory of an only son coming from the father filled with enduring love